Excellent. Let's see if we're up. Can you hear me? Give me a thumbs up or something in the uh, in the list uh, just to let me know that you're out there. Someone give me a thumbs up. Okay, so let's get started. It looks like I'm live and it looks like you can hear me, right? Double thumbs up, one thumb up. And let's get rolling. So my name is Dr. J.D. Swanson. Um, I'm an instructor for ISKF. Us from France. Thank you very much. Rock and roll. So um, I'm an instructor for ISKF. Um, it's awesome to be here. This is my second time um, teaching. If you want to check out my first, what we did was we did a very basic drill with the idea of teaching you how to shift your hips, how to move. What I want to do today is I want to do a, a slightly different sort of set of stories and something that's important, I think, for all of us and something that we really have been emphasizing or my seniors have been emphasizing within the ISKF is the concept of kihon, kata and kumite being the same thing. So what I'm going to do for today is we're going to do some drills that really it follows along a base pattern that you've probably seen before if you've seen any of my stuff. And what we're going to do is we're going to interrelate the three together. And I'm going to show you sort of both clean variations and dirty variations as we move along. So I'm really, really looking forward to this. So my key thing is have fun. I'm going to give you one caveat just uh, once we get started. But other than that, let's bow in and let's warm up. So I only have one hour and that's tough for me. So hey, super Dutch. Hey, hey. Us. Good, let's just warm up. It's very, very hot here in Rhode Island. I am already sweating and all I've done is bow in. So from here, just stretching down, just nice and relaxed. Very good. Rolling down, put your knee down, foot flat, hand out, toe and peel out and just roll up. Very good, when you're ready, put your toe down, lift up, keep the same position. Good, and switch. If you're anything like me in my day job, I end up sitting at a desk for quite long periods of time. So my hip flexors end up incredibly tight. So it's really important for us Karaska to really stretch those out. Good, from here, dropping down one knee, toe heel out, relax up. Very good, ball the foot, come up. Excellent. Rocking over, dropping down onto the heel. Switch. 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 Good. And up. Hips, nice big circles. Other way. Good. Arms forward. Backwards. Out and in. Out and back. Very good. Left ear to your left shoulder. Right ear to your right. Look to your left. And to your right. Good. Look up. Look down. Good. And just loosen off anything else. For me, it's my calves. I have a pole right here, so I can use that as my partner to stretch. Just push in with your hip. Keep your heel down. Next. From here, let your hip relax and bend your knee. It just pushes the stretch further down into the Achilles tendon. Very good. And then from there, just onto the ball of foot and just push under one more time. Switch. Senkutsu. So from here, just pushing, keep the heel and legs straight. Let your hips relax back, push down through the knee and then push in again. So bend knee this time. 
Very good. And then from here, lift up onto the ball and push everything under. Just stretching through the hip flexor one more time. Good. Last one. Grab hold of your instep. Stretch out. Keep your knees together. This ain't it. Right. Just here. Hold. And relax. Push your hip forward. Good, and switch. Very good. Excellent, good. And just loosen off anything else. Very good. Okay, so the big caveat. Number one, I'm doing something that's left and right because even though I have a PhD, I'm also the, over the age of 45, and so therefore I have a technophobia. So what happened is I can't figure out how to flip the video in Facebook Live. So we're going to be, what's going to happen is the blue side is my left-hand side. You're going to see it as your right. It doesn't matter because we're going to do everything symmetrically, but what you'll find is there may be some confusion when I say left leg forward, and it looks like I step forward with my right. It's actually my left. So just bear that in mind all the way through as we go. And it doesn't matter if you learn it on the opposite side, because the story is going to be the same, okay? So that's just a heads up. Remember, my left is actually your right and vice versa, and oh, it gets too confusing too quick. So just be prepared for that, okay? But other than that, everything else is going to rock, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to warm up with a very, very simple Kihon drill. So something within the ISKF that, that my seniors have really been focusing on is the concept of back to basics. And when you think of Kihon, it's not really basics, but it's our fundamentals. So what we're going to do, if you've seen any of my videos, I have a series relating directly to this series. Um, so you can catch up with it there or catch up on this sort of later on. Um, you'll be able to do it and catch up at any time you want. But we're going to sort of talk, have our karate discussion on this framework. So from here, just from Yoi, what you're going to do is you're going to step forward with your left leg, make Gerambarai Gyakuziki. So just nice and relaxed, just smooth because we're learning the steps. I itch, then make Gyakuziki. Knee. Good. Come up. Moichido, this time on your right. Itch. Knee. Good. And up. Now back with the right, block with the left. Sum. Punch. Good, and come up. And one more time, back with the left, block with the right. One, two, good, and come up. So some things that you really want to be thinking about, right, as you do something as simple as that, is ask questions like, as I step, am I rocking forward and leaving my bum behind as I step? This kind of thing. Am I stepping down into harmony, then making shawman, right? Is the drive, when I make my gyakuzuki, is it rolling through this side to slam the door shut so my body center moves into the target? All of those fundamental pieces are critical as you drive through. Let's go through it again. Ready? Forward with the left. Itch! Knee! Forward with the right. Itch! Knee! Good. Back with the right. Itch! Knee! Back with the left. Itch! Knee! Very good. So starting to feel a little bit better, a little bit looser. Let's add in the other four steps. So we've got one, two, three, four. All right, let's go through those again. Make get umbrai. This time make the block and the punch one count. Itch! Me! Now our next one, what we're going to do is we're going to rotate out. So I want you to keep your left leg still, rotate around, make get on but I like so. So I'm just going to stay, pivot, and drop into get on but I. Itch! Good, and up. And then we're going to do the same on the other leg. Knee! Good. Now for our last two, we're going to shift. So all you need to do is from here, lift this foot and shift out like so. So it's here, that feeling. Ready? 
All cool? Ready? Itch! Good, and up. Other side, knee! And up. Very good. So we have a total of eight steps. Forward left, forward right, back right, back left, rotating round, rotating round the other side, shifting, shifting, and that's it. Easy? Cool? Let's try it again. Let's try it with Gerambarai. And once we get to the second floor, I've got some other comments to make as we go. So nice and relaxed, forward left, forward right, back right, back left. Itch! Me! Back, son! Back the other side, she! Very good. Now rotating, be aware, don't leave this in the same place. Someone's going to be attacking, you want to get your whole body, whole center out of the way. Don't leave it in the way. That's just kind of silly. Second thing, allow your feet, allow your body center to readjust the feet as needed. So when I step, there's no sort of foot adjustment first and then move. I don't readjust, then step. I simply allow my hip and my center to move and make the turn that I want. In this case, we're making get but I, the block doesn't matter as you'll see in a minute. So we rotate, itch, then punch. Good, same, same other side. Knee. Good, and up. Again, double check as you land. Hum. Then throw to Shawman. Make sure, block round. Hum. Then throw to Shawman. Don't sort of land wherever you want. Land and start. This is basics training. From here now, we're going to shift. You're going to push off your right, dropping down. So as you go here, be aware that you simply don't drop in the middle. All I'm doing, or simply drop down like so. If I shift this way, yeah, my head's got off line, but this is right in the way of my opponent. Likewise, when I'm here, this is right in the way of my opponent. You must clear. You must clear. So allow your body center to get out of the way and everything else to drive in, yeah? It's really important. So let's try that. Ready? Itch! Then drive. Come up. Knee! Then come up. Excellent. So that's the feeling that you want. Be aware, and one of the reasons I've drawn, I've got these two lines on the floor that we're going to make use of. What these represent is somebody big and fat like me walking along. This is my distance. This is like, if you can imagine, the train tracks that somebody would come in attacking me. I don't have a human for you, unfortunately. But instead, I'm going to use these train tracks to represent the path that that person took. The blue line represents the punching hand if they were punching with their right hand. For me, it would look like your left on your side. We've had that discussion. So it's that feeling of them coming straight in here. So each time, be aware of where that blue line is. So let's think about it in Kihon sense. So think strong legs, strong connections to the floor, butt in, good posture, which I struggle with. That's the hardest thing in karate for me. Good timing of technique within the technique. Good hami, good shaman, good connection to the floor. All of those things through the step of eight. Ready? Itch! Good. Forward with the other leg. Knee! Good. Back with the same leg. Sun! Good. Back with the other leg. She! Up. Excellent. Now we're going to rotate. Notice how I clear myself off the train tracks. Right? The train choo choo goes straight past me. Hey, itch! Good. Check that your butt doesn't come out. Knee! Good. Now from here, shifting to the side. Don't allow, in this particular case, make sure that you clear those train tracks. Don't move and leave your body. Simply shift. Move the whole thing as one unit. Ready? Itch! Good and up. Knee! Good and up. Excellent. So, you've got the handle on the drill, I hope. So it's this nice idea of just stepping, moving, shifting. 
Now, the thing I want you to pay attention, we're going to go through it again, and what I want you to pay attention to right now is the idea of that first stance, the blocking stance, whatever that is. Don't, don't half-ass it to then just make a good punch. You always ask yourself, why do you pass a ball in basketball? The answer is to get, you, get the ball in a better position to score. It's the same idea in karate. The reason we move our body center, or the reason we block, is to get ourselves in a better position to score. So allow that to happen. Allow the rotation to hit, allow your technique to hit, allow yourself to feel comfortable and strong with whatever position that is. Again, just practicing through the basic steps, think about that first stopping technique. Just using, just using Gerambarai. Ready? Ish! connection, you can make that placement, you can make that stepping. Next thing I want you to think about with Kihon, with basics this time, is change the block. Change it to whatever flavor of block you want. Right? So as you go in, you can think about Ganamurai, you can think about Agyuke, Sutuke, Uchike, Shutuke. The key thing, keep it basic. Keep it simple. My advice for now is keep everything within the stance Zenkutsudachi. Hami Shomen. So, whichever block you want, same stepping pattern, same fundamental rules. Good posture, good connection of stance, good timing, all of those things. The last piece is your choice of block may matter, right? If I'm rotating to the side, it really makes no sense as to why I might use Uchuke, because the block's coming in, it's a much harder block to use. So why not, if I'm rotating, pull them in the direction that I want them to go. Pull them in the direction rather than moving the opposite way. There are times to do that, but if you can uh, manage it, by all means. But think about the practicality of the technique that you're using. Okay, block choice is yours. I'm going to make mine up as I go. I have no idea what ones I'm going to do. Ready? I itch! A kick almost got me. I felt it go. Hey, go! Oh! Very good. So it should feel good, yeah? You should be able to move and apply your basic blocks as you need. Here comes the next level. The next time we go through this, still thinking in Kihon, in basic. What I want you to do this time is I want you to now adjust your stance. So you may not want to use zenkuts. You might want to use kokuts. You might want to use kibadachi. You might want to use mikuashi dachi. The, the stance choice is now yours, but the rule is you must keep it basic. You must keep it simple. So, for example, think about the pros and cons of each stance. What do they do for you? When I think of Zenkuts, it's here, boom, everything can push in. Basically, when I think about the dynamics of Zenkuts, it's like I'm pushing off this front leg, and my rear leg is pushing, so everything is moving forward. It's a transitory position. When I think of back stance, I'm further away. I've dropped down, but this leg is incredibly well loaded to drive. When I think of Kibadach, I think of being whoop, locked in place, stuck to the ground. And from here, now I can drive and drive my center in. When I go into Nikwashida, my body weight is still feeling forward, but this leg is so incredibly well loaded, both through the front and also the rear. So play with that. Play with that story. Ready? Stance choice is yours. Think about why and what you might use. Again, good timing, good technique. You don't, you can still use inputs, everything's good. Right, but now change. Now the option is open to change stances. Even Hangetsu. 
はい一。So now you can make those changes and starts, yeah? You can make those. Feeling the idea of Hangetsu on the first one. Whoa, that slight C curve that my hips make that allow me to dodge round the opponent. Right? These feelings as you move forward. The feeling of kokuts to completely absorb thinking here comes in. The feeling of kibidach. Boom! The solidness of it. That's the feeling that you want to feel as you move through in a very basic type of drill. So allow that to happen. Allow that to make its decision for you. The last one. This time, and I did it automatically in the last one, now alter your defensive technique, your counter-offensive technique. You can make it empty, rakin, maigiri, giri, any type of kick that you want, any type of strike that you want. But again, keep it within the basic rules. Keep it within solid stance, solid technique. So let's try. Ready? H. Me. Sun. Chi. So again, feeling that simplicity of technique, feeling the connection of the legs, the connection of the body, the connection through both the loading and the placement so I'm set up, but also through the drive of the technique as you move in. It's critically important to always pay attention to those things. So that's part one. You can play with this any way you want. And again, I'm doing it as a strict one, two movement. A strict block counter. You can imagine these, of course, being a little bit more, um, a little bit more angry. If you think of things like um, get on, but I, for example, right, because you're moving in, of course, it becomes block and strike simultaneously, and then strike down. You don't necessarily need any more. If I'm rotating round, you can alter that. One last step for the basic piece, and then we'll leave it behind. On the rotations and on the stepping in, what you can also do is now modify the concept or the idea by which you're moving. At the moment, I've been moving on sort of a direct line back to and from you, and then rotating round on a 90 degree angle. I don't have to. I don't have to make those strict angles. Depending on how aggressive my opponent is, or how non-aggressive my opponent is, I can alter these steps. So, for example, when I step forward, instead of coming straight forward like so, I can now shift my body this way. Notice what I've done is the train's on coming, plain chicken, plain chicken, whoop, dodge to the side, and then make my counter-attacking technique, which would effectively clothesline them as they come past. Likewise, when I step here, I could step when I'm stepping with the other leg. One, or fully shift. When I step back, I want you to step straight back, absorb them, absorb them within the confines of this technique. This one, you're effectively following them on the cap on the train. When you rotate, you can rotate short, middle, or long, depending on what you want. Likewise, the other side, one, two, three, depending on the side. Likewise, when you shift, here, 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 right, or even here, right, depending on where you want to go. So again, don't be um, strict within those angles. Step on the angles that you want, 
that allow them to go. Let's do it one more time with basics, but pay special attention to that first position, that blocking position, to make sure that you're positioned in the best place that you can be to make your counterattack. So let's try again. All of the rules of Kihon apply. Ready? Hey. Itch! Me! Stepping back. Sun! She! Now rotating. Go! Oh! Now shifting. Shitch! So again, feeling that same simple feeling, that idea that you're not fixed on what numbers of the clock you rotate on. So again, it all depends, good posture, good technique, butt tucked in, good timing of technique. So that's part one. Let's now bridge the same story into Jiu Kumite, into a freer feeling. So what we find is that sort of at least in, in, within the ISK, is that white belt till about green belt, everything's about developing fixed final positions, right? Your classic techniques. From purple belt onwards, we start to introduce the concept of this free kind of position. This idea of making Ju Kamei and being able to shift whoop, zinkuts, shift whoop, kokuts, and so forth. So let's now apply that within this particular technique. And this helps a lot for those of you who have brown belts that you're trying to test or get them ready for Jiu Ippon Kumite and of course into Jiu Kumite. So what we're gonna start is I'm gonna start with my left leg forward, I know it looks like my right. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna play it according to the basic rules. So first technique, if you remember rightly, was I stepped forward with my left. What I'm gonna do here is I'm simply going to step forward with my left, block and counter. So it'll just go from here, make the block, <coughs> counter. That feeling. For now, keep your blocks big. Keep them full and complete. Keep your upper body in Kihon land, and basic land. Put your lower body into free land. So that was the first. The second one was I stepped forward with my right. So here I am. Now I'm going to step forward. Oh! <coughs> block and counter. The next one was a step back. So all I'm going to do here is shift straight back and counter. Then I'm going to step back, right? My last one was stepping back with my left. So I come in, technique, oh, block and counter. So notice how this is mirroring our one, two, three, four pattern, but becomes one, two, three, Four pattern. It's still keeping the same and keeping the legs tied together to our techniques. Yeah. Now we do the rotation. Remember, first rotation was rotating around our left. So we're here. Simply rotate and counter. The next one was, of course, rotating around our right. So now we rotate, punch. Right. For the second one, that one's hard. You've got to think about hand shot up. Here. You take the weight on your back, and then you turn round. This is the same game. If I try and simply turn from here, guess what? I can't do it. My bum has to stick out. That breaks our rules that we learned in basics. So instead, I transfer my weight back and make the rotation that I need. So allow that to get you back, oh, of course, and make the hit that you want. From here, our next one, remember? was a shift, the other side was a shift. So from here I'm simply going to lift this leg, this leg's going to push, rotate, uh, likewise other side, this leg will shift, this will push, and back. So what we have is we have an exact rendition of the same Kihon techniques and the same Kihon principles, but we're doing them from Jiu Kamei. So it's going to be here. Step forward, step forward, step back, step back, rotate, rotate, shift, 
and shift, but now shift forward, step back, whoops, sorry, <laughs> shift forward, shift back, step forward, step back, shift back, and then step back. That's our first four. Now the rotations. Rotate about the front leg. Rotate about the rear leg. Then shift, push off the back leg. Shift, push off the right leg. Easy. Simple. That's the feeling that you want. Really, really simple. Again, keep that same principle that I had before of that first motion, that first landing position, wherever you choose that to be. Make sure that that hits and connects into the stance. Don't fall into floppy dutch. Make sure that when you land, it's into something. It's into something. It's into something. Right? With which you can then drive back in. Remember, you pass a basketball. The, remember, the idea is that you pass a basketball to be able to throw it and pass it and score. So make sure that your movement are positioning you in a way that allows you to position yourself to your opponent. And again, if I use this pole as an example, make sure however you land, whatever orientation, make sure when you make shawman for whatever attack, or hami for whatever attack, make sure it's not facing out here from your opponent. Make sure it's direct center into your opponent. You want that straight line from the rear leg up, out, in, and into your target. Right, so as soon as you get humans again, in North America, it's probably going to be a little bit of a wild for us. But as soon as you get humans again that interact and move with you, really work on that global positioning system to hit my opponents right here. Whomp, straight line. Or here, whomp, my opponents right here. Whomp, I can try it with the minimum number of adjustments needed. This is why we do Kihon Ippon Kumite. It does it from a fixed distance. Jiu Ippon Kumite does it now from a floating mai, a floating distance, which becomes far more difficult to make that calculus, right? Because when you go to full free, it's nearly impossible. So, let's try again. First one, shifting forward with the left. Just make it on the for now. I just want to make sure you got the foot. Foot position's right. Forward with the left. It's Good. Now step forward with the right. Good. Now shift back. Sanna. Good. Now step back. She. Good. Now from here, rotate. Itch. Good. Rotate off the back. Knee. Good. Now shift. Sun. Good. Now shift. She. Very good. So it's that same feeling. Boom, bada, boom, bada, boom, bada, boom. Let's do it one more time. Let's slow it right down. Feel the interactions of your feet and your stance. Right, as you move, because you're in kind of kamae, you're having the ability, there's a slight outward pressure on your feet. So you feel, if I lift, oh, it moves. If I squeeze, oh, it moves. Allow that movement to happen naturally. Allow that to happen simply. One more time, slow. Basic, basic blocks. Basic punches. Itch. Stepping, knee. Shift back, sun. Step back, she. Good. Rotate, go. Rotate, oh. Good. Shift, she. Shift, ha. Very good. Now what I want you to do is because we're free, don't feel restricted that you're on the strict lines that we are. So from here, you can now modify this with any of the rules that we modified the basic techniques with, yeah? So, when I step up and free sparring, I weigh about 195 pounds, 195 pounds. I don't like, even at my size, I'm, I'm six foot, I don't particularly like to drive straight into a, an opponent. That's just not me. Rather, what I like to do is I like to avoid. So allow, this time for me, I'm going to be here nice and calm. And rather than stepping straight through on the railroad tracks, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift along that arm. Because I'm moving in, 
the timing's different. I wouldn't get away with getting by unless I'm using the covering hand, unless I'm losing what Steve Ubel calls the in-between. So as I move, what I want now is I want that feeling of absorption shifting in hand. That feeling. Understanding and thinking about what's the attacking arm. Right here, I'll have gap, but I know there's another hand here. When I come to the closed side where the arm is, I know that I've, if I brush that arm away or I've got leverage to push against it and what the gaps are. You want to pay attention to that. Don't just randomize stuff. Think about what's there. So as I shift, all I want you to do is make the shift, block, counter. For me, you might be somebody who needs to make get on the line and just stop them dead. Well, remember, if you're here and you're shifting, you're going to get hit. Your timing must be faster than your legs, right, to stop that attack as it's coming in. The second thing is that you don't have to go through full course of action of your techniques. We're no longer doing fundamental karate. Allow yourself to use short course. From here, simply drop the elbow. Drop the elbow. As long as your body fires into the correct position and grabs, the sting's on the technique. If you need to use this to come in, use it. Then use the block. But be aware of which part of the block you're using and which part of the technique you're not. And only use what you need. So, let's try it. For me, I'm going to shift, I'm going to block it past me, right? So it's just going to come in here, I may use this, this, I'm not sure. We're making this up as I go. Ready? So it comes in, itch! Good, so that feel. Next one's going to be a step. I'm going to step through. This time, I'm just going to block right around. Oh, shit, they're over here. Hop. Now I hit. So you want that feeling. You want that idea of understanding. There's where my block occurred, here. There's where my block occurred. Now I can hit them in the back of the head. You want that flavor, that feeling. Let's try to shift back. All I want you to do is shift and absorb. So here, in they come, absorb. Now try for my step. The next one, I'm going to do a step back. So if I step back, what's most likely? I've created a ton of distance. My getting now comes into play. Right, so shift, boom. From here, we're going to rotate. So this time, I step around. Whoa, I've got a hold of them. Round, rapping. So the sotuke occurred. I just simply rotated my wrist, but the arakan then fired after that. From here now, I'm going to absorb them further. Chi, rotate. Notice I'm in kibidach. Out comes the kick. Right, could be yokogiri, maishigiri. Next one, the shift. In they come. I'm going to simply shift to the side. Oh, counter. There he is. The next one comes in. I'm going to shift again. Absorb them past. Boom. Counter. Haito each. So this is a way that you can start to develop your own class, your own techniques, based on the simple drill and understanding where and how the opponent's coming in and thinking about their time, thinking about how they're coming in towards you and how they're connecting within that, yeah? So let's try another round. What I encourage you to do is we'll move slowly so it gives you a little bit of time to think. Ready? First one, shifting forward. Hey, each. Good. Second one. Knee. Whoa, shift. There's where I want it. Probably more here. Hey, good. And again, I'm doing some of these wrong on purpose to help you understand the process that I go through. My step was here, and I'm, oh, oh no, they would probably be here. So now I need to turn. Kagazuki makes more sense. Don't be afraid to make those mistakes and fix them in real time. This is how you improve. From here, in comes the next. Shift out of the way, in, drive in. Just simple, I'm gauging. This doesn't even need to be used potentially because I'm just riding out that technique. Next one comes in, it's a full step. I step back, shift, kick. Right? So again here, I'm using the straight, the classic foot switch that we see used in so many of the other karate at home techniques. 
Again, I'm just trying to give you a framework. Now from here we rotate. In comes the attack. Hook here. That means they're going to be right there. Whoa! Exactly in target. Now I'm going to step back. I rotate. Whoa! Mawashi getting now works. Good. Nice and easy. Now from here, dropping out. This one. Whoa! I cut past them. They're right here. I'm loaded. In goes the technique. Next one is from here. I'm going to shift. I shift this time straight to the side. There's my opponent right there. There's the technique I can hit them with the fastest. Something that I really appreciated from Andre Vitel. He had a really interesting comment when he was talking about Jiwa Pong Kumite. And it's something I think is really clever and really cool. It's the idea that if you rotate in Jiwa Pong Kumite, your default should be Gyakazuki. Think of the thousands of Gyakazukis that you've done over the course of your training career. Probably more than any other technique. So therefore, as a black belt, you should be able to fire Gyakazuki pretty much at will at the target. So something I encourage you to think about is follow Andre's advice. Take the idea of rotating, making sure that your body's in position to be able to throw the cleanest Gyakazuki you want. And then any other techniques that you need to do, whether it's haito, a kick, whatever, do those because it's a choice. Does that make sense? That you're setting them up, you're making that extra step back. So let's try it once more with Jiu Kumite, and then from there we'll relax into Kata. So, nice and relaxed. Just moving slowly, yeah? Because your brain has to work a little bit here. So all I'm going to do is, the first one, I'm simply going to shift. One, one, hop, little wash, and down. They've dropped on the floor. From here, number two, I'm going to step. Me, shift, hate door this time. As they come in. Good, reset. Think about what's going to happen. You're going to shift back. So from here, absorb, then throw. Very good. The next one is going to be a step. So this time, in they come. Step fast, you are. With your Kogereki Komi. Have that feeling. Now we're going to rotate. My first one, they're going to be a bit of a wuss. So they come in. I simply use the hand that's out or the hand that's out to attack. In they come, rotating hit. So I'm using this hand to block, this to strike. Second one, they're coming in. Pretty aggressive this time. Rotate step. Skewer. As they come in. Now from here, body shift. Feel that step. First one, they're going to slide right past me. Past they go, I turn. There they are. Next one is going to be that simple push. They're going to push. They're a little bit more stronger. They're a little bit more it's coming in a little bit stronger. They're going to come to about here. I block. There they are. Whoa! Basic technique. Basic gyakuzuki as we think about it. So this gives you those sort of blocks that allow you to build from Kihon into Kumite, and in particular, Jiwipon Kumite. The thing that was really interesting when I was looking at yesterday's seminar by the very, very excellent Chinzo Sensei, thinking of the idea of the multiple, multiple counters, right, and I've seen that with a number of the instructors on Karate at Home. So thinking, not just sort of the one, two, but one, two, three, four, whatever else comes next. You can also roll that into this game. You block it all the way. Two, three, four. What other techniques roll in? So allow it not just to stop at one, two. Allow it to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or one, two. Look at how they react. Then three, four, five, six as the gaps open. Does that make sense? So how do you make the bridge now, the question you're asking, into those multiple techniques? How do you start? At the moment, what we've been doing is we started out with really allocuting our words. I have a horrible New Zealand accent. So if I talk properly and have my words beautifully nailed out, what I can do is that's my fundamental karate. Then what I work on doing is sort of loosening it up, adding, adding the inflections. Hey, changing my words on the fly. Right? This is Jew. But at the end of the day, when I think about it in those two contexts, all I'm doing is working on one to two words at a time. 
How do I make the transition to complete sentences? And how you do that is you do it through kata. And you can do it through both a kihon, which is bunkai sense, further study of the application and the methods used in the kata and the principles that it's getting at, and then to oil, right, which is the true application of the technique, which is fluid and floppy and fun, right? You can start to tie those two things together. So that's what we want to do. I'm going to use han nidan. It's something we all know, right, to be able to tie this together. And all I'm going to do is we're going to use the same eight steps, the same ways to move our body, but we're going to interrelate the kata itself. So you could easily imagine applying this in kihon ipon kumite, jiu ipon kumite, with the idea that it will eventually bridge to jiu kumite, right? Using kata application. This is the idea. So our first one, remember, was simply stepping forward. Well, within the kata, what can I do? This is their attacking arm, my, the blue side, as you can see. That's the arm that I'm worried about. That's going to be their closed side. This is going to be their open side. So let's have a look. First movement. Let's, the first one is simply stepping forward with the left. Well, let's think about it. I can either step straight up the middle or I can cut to the side. Let's think about places within hand knee down that do that. So from here, and by the way, this also fits in beautifully with Martin Sensei's kata, week, kata month last month. So if you like Gojo Shihot Ai, which was an excellent class, you can use the information from there. If you like Niji Shiho, you can use the kata from there, right, within the feeling and the flavor of the kata. Maybe I'll get invited back for a kata session one day. So, let's do hand up. This is the attacking arm. They're going to come along the, rain, the train tracks. Let's think. First move. Oh my goodness, here they come. I use shitake. Then from here I'm thinking, well, what's next? I'm already in place. I can simply drive, or I can simply keep it within the confines of the kata, use the first blocking hand to move that out of the way, and then strike down on the side of their throat. I am a strikey person in my kata application. I do karate. Okay, that's how I think. I still have all the throws and wrestling maneuvers, but I like to punch people. Right, that's one. But to me, I'm a small guy. I've said I don't really like stepping up that way. Instead, this time now, I'm going to think gyaku hamei, this way. So in, in they come. I'm in gyaku hamei, good textbook karate. Remember, it's your, it's maigiri here. Maigiri, punch. So what you can imagine is that in comes the blow, in comes the attack, kick the knee out, and punch within the basic technique. So we've got two options. One for the left leg forward. Let's have a think about the right leg. So, and by the way, do these with me, right? So let's just practice a few. Whatever kata your choice is, whatever one you like, step forward and use your kata application strictly from the kata. Ready? Itch! Good. Now, try it again. Try it again. Sun! Good. Now, from here, let's practice it stepping forward with the right. So, for me, first move of the kata, or second move, I'm going to step straight in, driving in. So, it's just going to be this, stepping straight in, uppercutting them under the chin. This is absorbing as they move in. So it's here, it's driven in. Simple as pie. Knee. Good. One more. Sun. Good. Notice I'm rotating my wrist. I'll probably go to shove in trouble for this. I know it's this way. This makes sense for what I'm trying to do. So now let's think about the stepping back. So the first one, I'm going to step back up here. Then I think the next movement is a stepping forward. I'm going to modify slightly. The kata says nukate. I'm going to change that to koko. I would rather hit somebody around the throat with this technique than stabbing them with my fingers and watching my fingers snap like little toothpicks. I have to type after all. So from here, in comes the attack. Itch! Now! Good. You can try whatever you want on the other side. Oh, the same. Now I've got the other side. We might use the same thing. Remember the attack's coming off to the inside. From here, I'm going to step back. One! Then I step in two. Making the double step. 
of shituke to shituke. So I can use those different motions. Now from here, I've got this rotation. So now I've got to think about, well, what are useful techniques that come in? Well, for me, as I make the step, I'm going to use my opening and covering hand to make the block. Technique comes in and I hit. Basically clotheslining them, I may all the way out if I needed to. So let's try each. Near. Good. Let's try the other side. Now what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the sotuke of the first movement, then try drive as I go. H. Try again. Me. Very good. Now we've got the shift. So for the shift, I'm going to simply think the last move of the cut or the last sets of moves. Back, get on the line, grab, arcade. So let's try. H, one, two, three. Good. Same thing the other side, just because I'm lazy. H, one, two, three. Right, let's try again. One, two, three. Up, one more time. Sun, one, two. So this kind of flavor. So what you can now think about is you can think about your kihon techniques and kata fitting in the same way. So what kata does for you is it gives you a language of karate. It gives you sentences. Before we only had words. We had words that were allocated very well. We had other words that just served their purposes and could be emphasized or de-emphasized. We could play with those. But on top of that now, now we have complete sentences when we put them into the context of kata. And that becomes powerful. So the last piece, the way that we just did it, was in terms of bunkai. In my mind, and this was really well defined by Robert Redmond and the 24 Flying Chicken stuff um, about 10 years ago, was that he defined bunkai as kata analysis. So for me, that has a very kihon kind of feel. Let's put it now into oil, which is that true application. This has the grappling. This is where I can deviate from said kata pretty cleverly or pretty consistently. I'm going to keep it within the confounds of how nida, but what I do is I call this commonly dirtying up the kata. So it becomes sloppy. Some of the words kind of slur together. Some of them are overemphasized rather more than others. Right? You can do that kind of feeling and that flavor within the confines of the technique. So, first one, of course, is going to be, I'm going to start from just sort of a dew. It's, oh my goodness, please don't hit me. I'm going to cry. Or I might be in free sparring time, free sparring mode. So, self-defense, free sparring, your choice, but you're in more of a sort of, relax, oh, why, don't hit me, I'll cry, that kind of feeling. So, first one comes in, all I'm going to do is I'm going to shift, because I understand my shifts, Kick out the armor and just punch them. Right? So the idea here is this idea of shift, shift, shift to hit. So I can think about it as absorbing, kick the knee out, wah, the head drops, and then just nailing through it using my karate principles and kata principles and karate fundamentals, but letting them go and moving beyond. That's the cool part. So it looks sloppy. But believe it or not, my hips are still set. I feel my hips set and I feel my hip and body move. Just the same way that I would do a normal karate technique. So, one more time. Let's try it from this side. Gone. Let's do the next one. Remember the next one was a step. So this time, all I'm going to do is I see them come in. Bam! Just hit them straight up the line. Ba-ba! Finish. Right? So again, just using the first moves of the kata, using this to guide whatever technique it is past me as I move in. Then, bam, bam, that feeling. Third one is simply shifting back. So here, I'm going to use this part of the shito. One, two, to strike in. Just feeling. Absorb. Ah! Straight in with the shituke. Next one is a full step. So this time, step back. Now step in. Right? So I step back out of the way. Step, 
can through block and strike this feeling. This is within the principle of the kata. Next one is the rotation. I'm here. All I'm thinking about this time, and it comes. Guide it past me and slam them as they go. Guide and past. All I'm doing here, should do game. The next one comes in. All I think of this time is guiding past. And again, slamming in. Empty if they're close. Shuto if they're far away. Shuto uchi if they're in between. You can use those techniques. Last one. Let's think about it. They're coming in on this angle. Feeling this time that idea. They get them, but I grab them by the head. Aga empty. Knock their head off. The last one, right, that same shift, feeling this time, strike ah! using the shift of the angle, using almost a, a, a punchy strike, strike, ah, hit of the shiduke. So what you can do is you can see how you can use the principles of the kata to start to interrelate your karate. Going all the way from Kihon Waza, very strict, to Jiu, to Kata, to understand techniques that fit together, to then Jiu Kata, or Oyo practice, to tie techniques together in a Jiu Kumite type of sense. So with that, what we'll do is we'll cool down a little bit, relaxing forward. And the thing that you want to remember is that you always hear Kata, Kihon, Kumite as being these three separate things that people always say, you must practice them, and they're all the same. You must bring them together. You must make them fit together to allow your karate to progress. Right? You need to feel the benefit of each piece as it moves forward. Very good. So hips, one more time. Good. So a very, very simple lesson at its heart, but very difficult to master. Imagine if your Takui Kata is Sorchin. Imagine if your Takui Kata is Niji Shiho. Right? Start to play with those techniques. Take the building blocks that I gave you today, incorporate them into your practice, and use them to expand your practice. The one part that we're not able to do, to, to, to do today, of course, is that of, of partner training, of kumite, right? We practiced it in a kihon sense, kumite sense, or jiu sense, but we weren't able to do the physical partner training. I had to use my imagination to do a lot of pointing of where in my head that actually was. And that can be helpful in a COVID environment, right? Funakoshi once said, if you merely move your arms and legs, um, or without the thought of a partner, you are merely moving your arms and legs like those of a puppet, right? you miss the quintessence of karate do. So even in basics, have the feeling of the human being there. And so with that, I'd like to thank Martin Sensei for inviting me for a second time. I hope you enjoyed the training. I hope you got something out of it to be able to play with in your own dojo. And um, I hope I seeded some ideas. So with that, have an awesome day. Today's Friday for me. I have to go back to work. Boo, boo. Yay, I like work. It's fun. But um, I hope all of you over in Europe have a wonderful weekend. Those of you in New Zealand, I hope you're waking up to a wonderful Saturday. And with that, thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you all again. Hey, super Dutch. Hey! Us. Thank you for having me. Thank you for hanging out. And I look forward to seeing you again. Take care. Bye-bye.